This is the uh, SCI ST880, and uh, I have the ni nitrogen uh, turned off on purpose so that you can see how it would look and get an error message on here. Uh, I have the nitrogen feeding both, uh, both uh, upper and lower units. Um, so here you see it says nitrogen pressure loss. I'm going to go turn it on. I turned it on, but you still have the error. You have to hit the clear errors. You press the top uh, off or stop or clear button, whatever you call it. You can see I've done the top one, and now I'll do the bottom one. And if I hadn't turned it on, uh, those error messages would have, would have just stayed there. On and off, so your system is here. Emergency stop is here. Uh, these same functions are available on the uh, electrical control box, but you're probably going to do most of your work here. In addition to that, each controller has their own on and off switch. When you have nitrogen flowing, these doors do have an airlock. Since we're in idle mode, we're able to open them up. And as you can see inside here, we have a, a rack of uh, wafers loaded. Uh, to test this, you need a full whack, rack of wafers, and it tells you right here on the rotors uh, what wafers for that particular rotor, what, what rack you need in there. Once you start a cycle, this door will lock uh, so that you can't be injured. So, to, to program this, you can step through the modes, so I'll hit mode, and you can see we're in the first rinse mode, and it's programmed for 10 seconds at 500 RPM. To change any of these, you need to go through your cursors here. So for instance, if I wanted to change that to 15 seconds, I would hit the right cursor over to the proper place, in this case the ones place. I can hit the plus key, which would then change that to, the, to whatever setting I wanted to. And then you can just hit the mode to exit out and it goes to the next cycle, whatever that would be. If you hit mode again, you'll notice that it goes to port and then back to idle. Port is explained in the manual. But to change other, there's a couple of features that are in here, which is the uh, dry times. So to do that, you would hit and go to the rinse and then you would hit from the rinse cycle, you would hit the plus, then there's the quality rinse, purge, dry one, and dry two. And each one of these can be set individually according to time and speed. I've got them at short speed, so you can see it steps through the cycle, uh, but without taking forever to do that. At any point in this changing of this, you just hit mode, get all the way back to idle where it stops flashing and at that point you're looking at the time and um, which is the defaults to 3600 and the RPMs of the unit. So we're going to start the top one because that's the one I have the rack in right now and go through a quick cycle and you can see how it, how it runs. You can see it did the rinse time that I changed to 15 seconds. And that's 500 RPM. Showing you the actual RPM. Go through a purge. And you can see we've ramped up. Now we're into a dry. So we've gone through a rinse. We've gone through a purge. And now we're in the dry cycle at 1200 RPM. And then dry two, which might be have different settings. I've got it set to the same, <coughs> but it might go to different settings depending on your application. It'll then slow down, and once it gets to a certain RPM, it'll alarm to indicate that it's finished. Still slowing down. And at this point, you can open the door, 
the lock has been released, it's wet because we didn't go through a full dry cycle, and you're able to access your rack of wafer. Okay, I've moved the uh, rack of wafers down to the bottom unit. I've got the programmed exactly the same way. I'm going to hit the start button here. And again, you can look at the settings up here as it goes through the steps. And we're already into the dry cycle. I think I had zero on the rinse on that one. And And as you can see, these are self-writing mechanisms so that the wafer is always, the wafer rack is always in the upright position. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate the fact that the resistivity sensors are working. Uh, so I'm going to show you that there's a change. Right now they're disconnected from the drains in the backs. And I'm going to be immersing the uh, resistivity sensor in a a beaker of DI water, and but it's not the best DI water, so you'll see it come down much further than you would normally in a in a very good DI system. So I'm going to show that for first the top one, and then uh, then the bottom one. Point two. So that was the top one, and now I'm going to do the bottom one. Point two. For power supply to this unit, it's 208 volts single phase. You have your main power in. Uh, we've got about a, an eight foot cord on this. Uh, it will come with no plug. Uh, you can attach it to your facility wiring. On, on the output to the machine, we've got two lines. One is for each unit. Even though they're stacked, they are considered separate units and wired as such. Out of the rear of the machine, we have the quick connects for the outlets for the, for the controllers. Here are your drains and the associated piping for that and your uh, in input for nitrogen and your input for DI water. And the same thing for the top here and the same thing with the drains. These are vents. They do not need to, to be plugged or anything. Uh, and these are your resistivity sensors. And on this side here at the bottom, this is your drain, which can go to a floor drain, or you can pipe it to wherever you need to.